Washington, D.C. and Baltimore happened to be a kind of crucible for interest in treating psychotic patients, particularly schizophrenic patients. Uh, at St. Elizabeth's, uh, Winfred Overholzer was the superintendent, and he succeeded uh, William Lanson White, who was appointed there in uh, 1904 by Teddy Roosevelt, and he served as superintendent until his death in 1937. And White was a very innovative man. He was interested in psychoanalysis, and uh, he brought leading people to his hospital, which was rather unusual because of a large institution. But at the same time, overlapping some of this was Adolf Meyer, who came to Johns Hopkins in 1909. And he was probably the leading psychiatrist in the nation at the time. And Meyer was unusual in that, although he was European trained, he developed an optimistic feeling about the patients uh, who was, we felt that uh, we could rehabilitate them and that uh, it wasn't all downhill, organic, uh, pessimistic outlook for Meyer. So here you had Meyer in Baltimore and White in Washington. And they, of course, brought with them uh, investigators, uh, analysts. They brought people to uh, the hospital there and to the teaching institutions. And it was in this setting that uh, Dexter Bullard's father um, came to Rockville, Maryland and founded Chestnut Lodge. It was an old summer hotel, and he turned it into a rest home and treatment center for patients. And Dr. Bullard's son, Dexter Bullard, grew up on the grounds of Chestnut Lodge. Uh, so he mingled with patients and uh, had a very congenial kind of attitude toward them, uh, which was rather unusual because most people felt kind of distant, put off, as though these were uh, strange creatures. Uh, Dexter uh, decided uh, to go into analytic training and to create an analytic hospital. Uh, and he started Chestnut Lodge in the 30s. He had an analyst on the staff. And um, in the mid-30s, um, he heard about Frieda from Reichmann, who had come from Germany uh, with her husband, Eric Fromm. They had, at that point, had broken up. And uh, he was interested in having her on the staff. And she had had a very successful experience working with psychotic patients in Germany. So there was a third leg of the part of Rockville being just outside of uh, Washington, DC. So he began to add analysts to his staff and trainees to his staff. It was in this setting that I arrived. And it was seemed rather natural to go with the flow and uh, be interested in uh, treating these kinds of patients. At the same time I was at uh, St. Elizabeth's, the Washington School of Psychiatry had been established. And Harry Stack Sullivan was uh, the leading figure at the Washington School of Psychiatry. 
Harry Stack Sullivan was never on the staff at Chestnut Lodge. Uh, people often make that mistake. He did, however, give a series of lectures before my time at uh, Chestnut Lodge and that they were recorded and formed the basis for many of the books that was later published after his death. Um, but uh, I did go to the uh, Washington School of Psychiatry where we had uh, Sullivan teaching, we had a sociologist, we had a philosopher, we had an anthropologist, we had uh, a series of people giving lectures on psychiatry and psychodynamic psychiatry. So it was a hotbed for analytic thinking, especially about psychotic patients, in contrast to much of the country where the emphasis was on uh, electroshock, insulin shock. When I came to St. Elizabeth's, uh, lobotomy was a uh, uh, prominent feature uh, at the George Walsh University Hospital. Uh, they were doing transorbital lobotomies by Walter Freeman. Uh, part of my rotation from St. Elizabeth's was uh, to George Washington, so I had spent a month there and uh, was exposed to uh, Freeman's teachings and uh, his work. Uh, so. There was quite a contrast between whether this whole thing could be handled by some kind of mechanics applied to the patient or whether you could form a relationship and work with the patient. And uh, as uh, Meyer felt that you could kind of retrain them, uh, get them out of their habits of their thinking and uh, rehabilitate the patient to adapt to a life outside of a hospital. Uh, this was before the medications came into being at all. We had uh, very little to work with. We had sedatives, uh, but uh, none of the uh, antipsychotic medications that are in such prominence today. Uh, well, this tells you, I guess, how I got interested and how I got started in that particular kind of work. I came to uh, uh, Chestnut Lodge in January uh, 1951, and I stayed on there for 11 years. And uh, we had uh, prominent people contributing to the research and literature. Frieda from Reichman supervised one of my cases. Uh, Otto Will, Harold Searles, Don Burnham, Bob Gibson. There was a whole series of people there, uh, intensive. I entered my own analysis at that time. Uh, I undertook analytic training, saw patients, uh, both psychotic patients and uh, uh, neurotic patients in the course of my training over the next 10 years.